Welcome back to the 12 Days in March video podcast edition. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this edition, we will review metabolic liver disease with a focus on Wilson's disease and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. That's, that's it on hemochromatosis. We can go quickly through the next two, Wilson's disease and alpha-1. So Wilson's disease, right, Michael Fox with Parkinson's disease. Wilson's disease and Parkinson's, hepatolenticular degeneration. They like this because they can link the liver and the brain again. So we're going to get a little emotional again here. So whereas hemochromatosis, we couldn't sense the iron. In Wilson's disease, we can't get rid of copper. Okay, so it's a disease of copper transport. And the main player is this ATP protein. In the cytoplasm, it carries copper. It delivers copper into the canalicular system, into the bile. That's how we get rid of copper. And so in this example here, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this movie, but this is Samwise Gamgee carrying Master Frodo. So Master Frodo's got to deliver the ring to Mount Doom, but he just can't carry it anymore. But Samwise knows he can't carry the ring, but he can carry Master Frodo and picks him up and carries him up to Mount Doom. He saved the day. So in this analogy, the Samwise is the ATP protein carrying Master Frodo, which is the copper, into the bile canalicular system. So in the Golgi, so that's one thing. So you dump copper that way. In the Golgi, Samwise actually takes the copper and attaches it to ceruloplasmin, and that's a circulating form. So ceruloplasmin is a carrier of copper. It's a marker of Wilson's disease. If you have Wilson's disease, you're not making ceruloplasmin. So a low ceruloplasmin is a marker for Wilson's disease. So it's a deficiency of the transport protein, no ceruloplasmin, no dumping of copper into the bile. And if you can't get rid of it, then copper deposits. And then you just have nowhere where it dumps. It dumps into your eye. The Kaiser Fleischer rings. And I bet everybody's happy I have a different picture of the eye than that one they show on every other slide. So in Deschamais' membrane. The other key thing is this juvenile Parkinson's disease. So hepatolenticular, lenticular nuclei, the basal ganglion. Patients with liver plus Parkinson's equal, especially young patient, this is Wilson's disease. Those are the questions get prepared for derivatives. And so Wilson's disease can be a chronic disease, but also can be associated with acute fulminant hepatic failure. Joint manifestations they never ask about. Here's just the picture. The yellow stuff is copper. Normal goes into the bile, attaches to apocerulloplasmin, ceruloplasmin into the circulation. Wilson's disease doesn't get into the bile, doesn't get into the circulation. Damages the liver. We just said all those things. Neurodegenerative, check. Decrease ceruloplasmin, increase serum and urine-free copper. Those are all straightforward neurodegenerative. That's the money. Here's the picture they keep showing, but I got a better new picture. I'm tired of that picture. Okay? Kaiser Fleischer. So, neuro manifestations, dysarthria, aphasia, apraxia, basically anything that sounds like a movement disorder in a patient who has abnormal liver chemistries, especially if they're young, is Wilson's. A third of them have psychiatric symptoms, bizarre behaviors, personality changes. That's how they're going to do it. They're going to give you some crazy person, and they're going to give you, by the way, a little line there, the liver's abnormal, and it's going to be a Wilson's derivative. Writings. Can't write all of a sudden. Can't talk all of a sudden. Acting bizarre. Abnormal liver chemistries. Answer, slit lamp. Okay, you make the diagnosis. and gets a plasma too. Soren did have Wilson's disease. Everybody knows that. This is um, just the stain. This rhodamine or rhodamine stain is a copper stain. You may see that as you tool around the Q banks. The liver pathology is nonspecific, nothing to memorize there. And there's the summary, Michael J. Fox, he had a normal ceruloplasmin. Just link Parkinson's with copper. Here's the question, what is the body's principal mechanism of getting rid of copper? Transport into bile is the main way we get rid of copper. Ceruloplasmin, we do it, but that's not the main way we get rid of it. And ceruloplasmin is a marker. These other things I would give you credit for, too. All right, alpha-1, then we're done with metabolic liver disease. Alpha-1 is quick. We'll look at serum protein phoresis. Alpha-1 lives on that alpha-1 spike. And the key thing to know of alpha-1 is really that in the liver, it, it damages the liver one way. In the lung, it causes damage another way. In the lung, it's loss of anti-elastase. Elastases damage the lung. In the liver, it's a folding process. So here's the first time I'm showing this protein phoresis. 
in the next two weeks, we're going to see this picture, I'm telling you, a dozen times. So serum protein phoresis, albumin, uh, negatively charged, globulins migrate the far away, and you're lacking the alpha-1 peak. So you can get protein phoresis for an alpha-1 deficient patient, or you can just get an alpha-1 level. And here's a good picture of what's going on with alpha-1. Here, normally glycosylated in the endoplasmic reticulum, goes through Golgi, secreted, life is beautiful. People with alpha-1 deficiency, the ZZ uh, phenotype, have abnormal glycosylation, abnormal folding, never makes it out of the endoplasmic reticulum, damages the cells. That's how it manifests with liver disease, abnormal folding as opposed to loss of anti-elastase. Characterized by the PAS positive stain, so PAS positive liver biopsy is alpha-1. And, and virtually all the alpha-1 questions are doing some overlap between liver and lung, lung in the basal or segments. We'll cover that during pulmonary. And this is just a summary. I already said the key things. Lung disease, loss of anti-elastase, liver, pathologic polymerization, PAS positive. What happens with these patients? Resolution, check. Cirrhosis and death, check. Cirrhosis but survive, check or just persistent abnormal liver chemistries. So it follows a full spectrum just to let you know what happens with these patients, and it depends on their phenotypic expression. They're not going to ask you. Patient with jaundice as a child is now short of breath. That's an alpha-1 question. PAS positive, just to remind you again, this is yet another condition can be associated with hepatocellular carcinoma, hepatocellular carcinoma, alpha fetoprotein, erythrocytosis, hypercalcemia. Good. We did those. So we did the metabolic liver diseases, hemochromatosis, alpha-1, and Wilson's. Booyah. It's a great question. And people historically have not gotten this one. 20-year-old, impaired balance, speech difficulty. Symptoms developed slowly over the last several months. Transaminase, elevation, negative viral serology. What would be most useful? The majority would actually take MRI of the head because they have a neurologic symptom, but that doesn't really necessarily go with the transaminase elevation. This was a presentation for Wilson's disease, slit lamp exam. Treatment for Wilson's, penicillamine. Good, we're done. And that concludes this detailed discussion of Wilson's disease and alpha-1 antitrypsin for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days. Thank you.